Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I hope you are all staying safe out there. I know 2020 has been one hell of a year so far, but I hope that you all are doing good. As for today, we're finally going to delve into the Phase 5 Best in Slot for Warlocks. And today we've got three different Best in Slot compositions, boys. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first best in slot setup we're going to look at is the best in slot setup that on paper is going to give you the most DPS output. However, the other sets we're going to look at could potentially be better than this set, but rely on multiple different variables, which we'll get to later on. So for this set, let's point out the pieces that have changed since phase 4. The first of those pieces being the tier 2.5 helmet, Doomcaller Circlet. Now, I'd like to point out that for this specific setup, if you already have a mission there from Blackwing Lair off of Nefarian, you do not need Doomcaller Circlet because they're essentially the same in value if you're not going for the five piece setup. So if you already have a mission there, you can pass on this helmet to other casters that don't quite yet have a mission there or are going for the five piece setup. Moving down to the amulet, we have Amulet of Vek Nilash, which is actually a 7 spell power downgrade from the amulet that we already have, which is Choker of the Fire Lord. However, it does add 1% critical strike rating, and with the gear and damage potential that we have at this point of content, the 1% crit is going to significantly outweigh that 7 spell power difference. Next we've got some fantastic shoulders which are the tier 2.5 shoulders and the reason I say these are fantastic is because they have hit rating and 28 spell power. The only other hit rating shoulders that we have currently seen are the Abyssal Cloth Amis of Sorcery off the Lords down in Silithus which have 15 spell power and 1% hit rating. So these have 13 more spell power than those and on top of that give you 10 spell penetration, which we'll talk a little bit more about what spell penetration does for us later into this video. For the cape, we've got Cloak of the Devoured, which is a DPS upgrade. However, this is one of the smaller items that you're going to get as an upgrade in this dungeon, since we already have the ZG Cloak, which is very, very similar in stats to this cloak right here. However, it's still a DPS upgrade, although just a small one. Next we have Rock Fury Bracers, and these bracers are actually interesting. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about these bracers already, and that when Phase 5 comes out, you can turn in, you can utilize your Scenarian Hold Reputation, needing Revered to obtain these, while turning in various different badges to turn in the quest and eventually obtain these bracers. While these bracers are best in slot, they're only a little bit better than bracers of arcane accuracy. So for all those people out there that you guys aren't exactly min-maxers, you don't have time to grind out every single bit of the game, don't worry. If you have bracers of arcane accuracy, they're a little bit worse than these, but they're very, very close. So you shouldn't feel the need to go grind out Rock Fury Bracers if you already have the Bracers of Arcane Accuracy. Only go and grind these out if you're really trying to min-max your damage, or if you don't already have Hit Bracers. Okay, now let's talk about Dark Storm Gauntlets, which is an incredible item that drops off of C'Thun and is going to be the best in-slot gloves for Warlock for the rest of the game. These gloves are amazing. They have 37 spell power, which is six spell power less than what Ebony Flame Gauntlets have. However, Ebony Flame Gauntlets are shadow power, and this is spell power affecting all of our different spells, AOE, dots, single target, you name it. And on top of that, it adds 1% hit rating. And similar to Amulet of Vek Nilash, you are losing a little bit of spell power, but with how hard that Warlocks can hit in AQ40, hit and crit rating are going to far outweigh that minor, minor loss of spell power. 
Now let's move up to the belt, which is another item off of C'Thun that lasts for the rest of the game. C'Thun loot is no joke, you guys. C'Thun loot is very, very good. Eye Stalker Waste Court has 41 spell power and 1% crit, and is a 16 spell power upgrade from the previous belt that we have, which is either tier 2 belt or mana igniting cord. And 16 spell power, while it doesn't seem absolutely massive, is still very significant. Okay, so there's actually one ring that I don't have listed here that could potentially be the best in slot ring. And that is the ring called Wrath of Scenarius. Wrath of Scenarius is a ring that you can gain access to after you've reached Exalted with Scenarian Hold. And this ring has a chance when your harmful spells land to increase your spell power by 132 for 10 seconds. So that most likely means that it has a chance upon application of a dot, not when each dot ticks. What's really going to matter for Warlocks though on this ring is its proc chance upon application of a single target spell, such as applying a corruption, casting a shadow bolt, or even landing a shadow bird. If this ring has a high proc chance, then it's going to be a very, very good ring because it means that you're going to increase the spell power of your next four Shadow Bolt casts by 132, which is almost as much as a Talisman of Imperial Power. So if you can proc this item consistently, it could very seriously outweigh any of the other rings that we could currently Next we have Ring of the Fallen God, which is from a quest item that has a 100% drop rate off of C'Thun. And this is similar to Eye Stock Wastecord. This is going to be a ring that you're going to use for the rest of the game as a warlock. And if you compare this to the previous ring that we would have in this slot, which would be Band of Force Concentration, you can see that once again, we have an item that is a 16 spell power upgrade, which isn't going to make or break your DPS, but is significant enough to be noticeable. Next, I just want to take a minute to point out the stats on this ring. This is a class ring that you get from AQ20 by obtaining the blue ring, Ancient Kiraji Ceremonial Ring, and turning in the quest. Now, every single class is going to be able to get an epic class ring from AQ20, doing the same quest line that you're doing. However, Warlock has one of the best rings from this quest line, giving you 14 spell power and hit rating and critical strike rating. Now, it doesn't give you intellect, which, you know, boo-hoo, intellect would be good if it had it on it, but still, this ring is incredible and is going to be one of the best in slot rings through this phase of content and going into Naxxramas, eventually being replaced in Naxxramas. The trinket slots don't actually change here. Notharian's tier, as we all know, is just such an incredible item that it's going to last you the rest of the game and likely pretty far into TBC. As for Talisman of Imperial Power, there's a few different variations of items that you could put in this slot, such as Talisman of Imperial Power, Zandalara Hero Charm. If you don't have either of those, you could go with Briarwood Reed or Eye of the Beast. The only thing that AQ really gives us for trinkets are trinkets that reduce our threat or trinkets that try to increase our survivability. And you shouldn't need the threat reduction trinket because at this phase of content, with warriors dual wield tanking and they have full tier 2.5 gear on, they have such massive stats and such good threat generation that threat should not be a problem for you. And if threat is a problem, it's usually not gonna be a problem for the Warlock, it's going to be a problem for the Fire Mage that's carrying a huge Ignite tick before it ever becomes the Warlock's problem. So for these reasons, we stick to our usual trinkets here. Looking at the wand, we can see that we actually get a small upgrade here, although it is extremely small and possibly the smallest upgrade out of all the items that we can obtain here. It's only adding one extra spell power more than the wand that we get currently from Zolgarub. However, it does add stamina, which isn't a really big deal for PvE content. However, this is really nice for 
PvP. Having stamina and a high amount of spell power on it makes it a great PvP item. But regardless, it's still going to be best in slot for both PvP and PvE. Looking at the offhand, we have Royal Scepter of Veklor off of the Twin Emperors. And this is a pretty considerable upgrade compared to the previous offhand items that we have. If you compare this to Jindo's Bag of Whammies, you get an extra critical strike rating in addition to what you already had. And if you compare this to Tome of Shadow Force, Tome of Shadow Force doesn't have any intellect, so you're gaining intellect, losing 14 spell power, but gaining hit and crit on top of that, making it a very significant upgrade. And lastly, we'll be looking at the main hand here, which is a huge upgrade. Earlier, we were talking about Ring of the Fallen God and Eye Stalker's Waste Cord, giving you 16 spell power upgrade. And these items are very, very good, and you're going to use them to the rest of the game. Well, if you have a Mage Blade currently, you currently have a main hand offhand setup, and you haven't quite got the Claw of Chromagus, when comparing this to Mage Blade, it's a 32 spell power upgrade. This is the exact same stats actually as having a rank 14 caster dagger. And 32 spell power upgrade is twice the upgrade that you're getting from the belt twice the upgrade that you're getting from the C'Thun ring, making this sword very, very good. And in my opinion, looks pretty cool as well. Okay, the next best in slot setup is a best in slot setup that depends on different variables. And this is a setup that a lot of people have been asking me about. This setup is the full tier 2.5 five piece bonus setup. When looking just at the raw stats that we're losing and gaining with this setup compared to the first one, you can see that we gain exactly 20 spell damage and we gain 0.4% crit chance, but we lose a whopping 4% hit rating, which is a lot to be sacrificing for 20 spell power and 0.4 crit chance. That is a negative trade, making this set mathematically worse than the first set. This setup uses Doomcaller's Robes, which adds an additional 20 spell penetration when compared to the first setup. Also, you'll get another 10 spell penetration off of the tier 2.5 boots. That extra 30 spell penetration isn't even everything. On top of that, you're also getting the five piece bonus effect reduces the mana cost of your Shadow Bolt by 15%. This 15% mana savings will give you 57 mana back per Shadow Bolt cast, which means after 6.66 Shadow Bolt casts, or we could just say 7 Shadow Bolt casts, you will have saved enough mana from this passively to make up for one free Shadow Bolt. Now, this doesn't inherently just give you a DPS increase. What this means is, the longer that a fight goes on in your specific guild, the better that this item set is going to get, because it's reducing the amount of life taps that you're going to have to do over that encounter. And if the encounter is long enough, saving you multiple life taps and multiple GCDs, those GCDs can be converted over into Shadow Bolts with the mana that you saved. So I would recommend using this five piece set if your guild's kill times are moderately slow. If you save anywhere between two or three life taps, then this set is very, very good. Also, fights going into Nax Ramus are going to be considerably longer boss fights than even the bosses in AQ40. So this set is also very, very good when moving into Nax Ramus and progressing through that raid as well. Now let's backtrack a little bit and talk about what that spell pen. Now let's backtrack a little bit and talk about what that spell penetration actually does. Here are the spell penetration charts and how an enemy's resistance score affects our Shadow Bolt partial resistances and full resist. Now you'll notice at the top that if the boss has anywhere between 80 
and zero resistance, you're not going to gain any additional hit rating, or also known as full resist, by gaining spell penetration. However, if the boss is at 90 resistance after you apply Curse of Shadows, which is 75 spell penetration, and that means getting an extra bit of spell penetration can move you a whole hit rating ahead. So for example, let's say that the bosses in AQ40 had an average shadow resistance of 175. You approach the boss and you apply Curse of Shadows. That is taking the boss's resistances from 175 down to 100. If you wear this full tier 2.5 setup and gain 40 spell penetration, 10 from the boots, 10 from the shoulders, and 20 from the chest, you're essentially gaining a hit rating by taking that extra spell penetration further. Not only that, but you're also lowering the chance for you to receive 75, 50, and 25% partial resistance. So even without you gaining a hit rating, typically spell penetration, depending on your gear and multiple other variables, on average gives you about 2.5% DPS increase per 10 spell penetration. So this spell penetration that we get, regardless if we can sneak in an extra hit rating using spell penetration, is still good for us. So to sum it up with this set, compared to the previous set that we talked about, technically the previous set with Bloodvine comes out with better DPS. However, depending on what the resistances of the boss are, and also depending on how long your guild takes to kill a boss, the tier 2.5 full setup, the full tier 2.5 setup, could end up coming out ahead of the Bloodvine setup. Last but not least, let's talk about trash. And why do we have a different setup for trash DPS? That is because against bosses, we have a 16% chance to miss with an additional 1% always remaining constant. So a 17% chance to miss. However, trash is typically not the same level that bosses are. For example, a level 62 monster gives us 6% chance to miss, with one of that being constant, meaning our hit cap against level 62 mobs is only 5%, and level 61 mobs have 5% chance to miss, making our hit cap 4% for level 61 mob. Moving into AQ, especially if you have Notharian's tier, you will easily get over 5% hit rating, which means any time that you're damaging any of the trash mobs in AQ40, which in AQ40, there is a lot of trash to clear, you're basically have dead stats because that hit rating is doing absolutely nothing for you. So this setup is going to be talking about min-maxing and seeing what we can do to improve our trash damage since so much of a raid clear has to do with clearing trash. First item here is the mission dare. We end up dropping the tier 2.5 helmet for the mission dare simply because the mission dare does not have a hit rating on it and we are clearly here just trying to drop hit rating. Amulet of Vec Nilash we still keep because it doesn't have hit rating on it and it has the best stats for that slot in the current phase of time, regardless of what trash mob we're fighting. Doom Caller's Mantle is one of the few pieces that we still keep hit rating on, just because the other alternative items are not quite as good as this item, and we need to get our 5% hit rating from somewhere. Two of that being tier, leaving us 3% in a very select few pieces of gear. The next hit rating that we're going to be including is from the Cloak of Devoured, or if you have the ZG Cloak, it would be from the ZG Cloak. And again, this is simply because we don't really have any good alternatives to swap away to. Sure, we do want to look to drop hit rating, 
but in the cloak slot there just isn't a good enough cloak that can compare to the raw 30 spell power that this cloak has making it one of the few items that we have to take for that hit rating and reaching the four or five percent spell hit cap against the trash mobs moving on to the doom caller's robes you actually have a few options here now i highly doubt that the trash mobs in aq40 are gonna have so much shadow resistance that curse of shadows isn't going to be enough to bring them down below 80 or close to zero but if under the odd circumstance that aq40 is released and the trash mobs in aq40 have significantly high shadow resist so much so that curse of shadows does not bring it to zero then the spell penetration from this robe gains value but even if the spell penetration from this robe is irrelevant then we still have good stats. This robe is still giving us 41 spell power and 1% crit, which is better than what tier 2 gives us, and is just about the same as what robe of volatile power would give us. And since this is heavier on spell power and a little bit less on crit than what robe of volatile power is, then that means that this is actually a better piece for hell firing and multi-dotting as well which you get to do quite a bit of in AQ. Moving down to the Burrower Bracers, you'll notice that these actually aren't that different when compared to Bracers of Arcane Accuracy or even the Rock Fury Bracers. The Rock Fury Bracers give 27 spell power, but no intellect. These will give you 28 spell power, no hit rating like the Rock Fury Bracers do, but one extra hit power and the intellect. Now, that is a pretty small upgrade, I will agree with you guys, but that small upgrade is the best thing that we can do here since we're looking to drop hit rating anyway, and on top of that, typically, no one really needs Burrower Bracers because it's not really a best in slot item for many classes outside of maybe a Shadow Priest. And if you compare these to the Rock Fury Bracers in particular, you're gaining a flat 13 intellect increase, which you're also going to get slightly extra bonus from if you have, if you're Alliance and you're a gnome, if you have Blessing of Kings, and if you come into the raid with world buff using ZG buff. Now, Ebony Flame Gauntlets are kind of a strange choice here, and let me explain why. Dark Storm Gauntlets are one of the best hit rating items that you can have in the game at this current phase of content. However, since there's no real good alternatives for the shoulder, and most particularly the cloak slot to drop our hit rating, we don't have many other choices in slots that we can drop hit rating, since we pretty much always have to use the tier, leaving us with three extra hit rating that we can get outside of the tier. One of those being cloak, which we cannot replace with any other decently good alternatives, and the shoulders. You could say, Alive, you can drop the Doomcaller's Mantle for Mantle of Blackwing Cabal. Why don't you do that? Mantle of Blackwing Cabal is 34 spell power, it's 6 spell power better. You're very right. However, that's largely going to depend if spell penetration on trash mobs is relevant at all. If spell penetration on trash mobs is not relevant, you could drop the Doomcaller's Mantle and go for a and go for Mantle of Blackwing Cabal, and if you go for Mantle of Blackwing Cabal, you can instead of Ebony Flame Gauntlets, go for Dark Storm Gauntlets, or you could do it this way as well. They're almost the same in damage output. Regardless, you want to get 1% hit rating from either your glove slot or your shoulder slot, depending on if that spell penetration from your shoulders is relevant on trash or not. Since AQ40 is not currently out, we won't know for sure for a few more weeks. Also, as a little side note, the tier 2.5 shoulders are much, much easier to get than the Dark Storm Gauntlets, since the tokens drop regularly. So that's most likely going to be the setup between gloves and shoulders that is easier to obtain. Looking at the weapon slots, we notice that nothing here changes at all. We're still gaining 1% hit rating 
from Royal Scepter of Vecklore. But if you look at the alternatives, we don't really have too many good alternatives. Jindo's Bag of Whammies also has 1% hit rating on it, so we wouldn't be able to drop hit rating in that slot. It's just a flat downgrade since Jindo Bag of Whammies doesn't have a crit rating. Looking at Tome of Shadow Force from Alteric Valley, that actually has 14 more spell power, but doesn't have any intellect, doesn't have hit rating or crit rating. So the evaluation on that item is much, much, much lower than Royal Scepter of Vec Lord. And then again in AQ20, we have another offhand that has 21 spell power and 1% crit rating, which is about the same stats as Royal Scepter of Vec Lore if the hit rating from Royal Scepter wasn't relevant. But if the hit rating from Royal Scepter of Vec Lore wasn't relevant, then that would mean you're either fighting a level 61 mob and you're looking to drop one more extra hit rating, or you have Doomcaller's Mantle and you have Dark Storm Gauntlets and you really, really need to drop an extra hit rating. But hey, I mean, if you have Doomcaller's Mantle, Dark Storm Gauntlets and Royal Scepter, you're already rolling in the loot, boys. You're pumping. So you can't really complain regardless. Looking at what else changed here, we'll move over to the leggings. And I've got written down fell infused leggings. But this really just depends. If you don't have fell infused leggings, you can you can very easily go for the leggings of Black Blizzard out of AQ20 from the last boss. However, Bell infused leggings are going to be the most optimal leggings if you're in any sort of multi-dot scenario, which happens more often in AQ40 than it has in previous raids. However, if you're not in a multi-dotting scenario and you're just single targeting one trash mob, then leggings of the Black Blizzard come out slightly ahead, especially if you're Alliance since they have intellect on them and this does not allowing the intellect to scale with known passive kings and ZG buff. Boots of the Epiphany are also going to be a small upgrade. The previous boots that we could have before this are either Snowblind boots, which are 32 spell power, 10 int, 10 stam, and MP5 off of Azure Ghosts. And if you haven't been able to kill Azure Ghosts, then the second best boots behind Snowblind boots would be Boots of the Betrayer from ZG, which also have 30 spell power. So this is only going to be a small upgrade, giving you a little bit more spell power and a bit more intellect. However, these are going to be the best boot option, unless we need even more spell penetration. Again, guys, spell penetration, I doubt is going to be that valuable versus trash. But as I said before, as of the recording of this video, AQ40 is not out. So I cannot say for certain how much shadow resistance each trash mob has. Although I do highly doubt that it's going to have so much shadow resistance on trash mobs that Curse of Shadows and Doomcaller's Mantle and Doomcaller's Robe is not going to be enough to take care of it. But if, but if you still need more spell penetration, then the tier 2.5 boots will be slightly better than Boots of Epiphany if that spell penetration is relevant. Now we're going to be looking at the last two slots, and those slots are Ritizen's Ring of Chaos, which is a ring off of trash mobs in AQ40, similar to that of Mind Tier Band off of Terrar, one of the Emerald Dragons that are currently up in the game. This gives you 25 spell power and 1% crit, which is about as good as you can ask for since we're looking to drop hit rating in the first place. The second ring here could very well be Mind Tier Band off of Terrar, which also has 25 spell power and 1% crit. That is most likely going to be the best in slot. Ritasing's Ring of Chaos and Mind Tier Band off of Terrar, one of the Emerald Dragons. However, again, coming back to the spell penetration, I highly, highly doubt that the mob, the that the trash mobs in AQ40 are, are going to have that much shadow resistance, but I did want to point this ring out to you guys just so that I didn't have any of you in the comment section saying, hey, Alive, you forgot about this ring here. What about, what about the spell penetration here? Is it valuable? 
20 spell penetration and 26 spell power on a ring is actually extremely good. The stats on this ring alone, just by reading what the ring gives us, is actually really, really good. It is, especially if we don't care about hit rating. However, we can't just look at the stats of this ring in a vacuum. If the mob already has, has little to no shadow resistance, then this ring isn't going to be better than Riddison's Ring of Chaos or Mind Tier Ban. And also, don't forget about what we spoke about earlier in the video as well with the ring Wrath of Cenarius. If Wrath of Cenarius has a high proc chance on its spell power proc, that would also be the best in slot trash ring. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't include a tanking setup for Twins tanking, and that is because I'm going to be making a totally separate video that's going to go over what type of shadow resistance gear you want to use, how little shadow resistance you can get away with, and the techniques that go into tanking the Twins in the first place. So that's going to have its totally own video. On top of that, remember, if any of you guys want to support the channel and help yourselves out, I'm also still doing coaching sessions as well. Primarily Warlock coaching on how to parse in Blackwing Lair, what gear you want to go for, how to move forward into AQ, or if you want coaching in any other area, you can inquire by just DMing me in Discord, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Well, that's it, guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you next time. Did everyone, did everyone exit out of the video yet? Okay, so if you haven't exited out of the video, and you remember what I said in Discord a couple weeks ago, I did say that I was going to leave a teaser for the new Warlock spec going into AQ40 that only works in AQ40. I'm going to leave that teaser right now, but if you waited this long and you were this patient to see the very end of the video, comment down below and say fire. So if you know, you know. Let's get into the spec.